everyone, guys. Welcome to Looking Ahead to Beto Days. I am Chris. And I'm Ryan. And we've hey. got our buddy Demarcus Gilliard back. How's it going? Hey, everyone. This is Demarcus. Thanks for having hey. me. Sorry, Thanks I almost jumped back. the gun. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. This this whole guest host thing is super new. And it just, instead of having people come out and talk about different things, we just kind of fucking hang out and yeah. we talk a lot of shit. Uh, it's an honor, so thanks for having me. And uh, <laughs> Anytime. I love this Anytime. show. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. So now that we've gotten all of the happiness uh, in the room Kumbaya. together, we're going to go ahead and crush it with the coronavirus because... <sighs> oh, boy. It's a way we're... to bring the mood down right away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> right, it's like going in your cereal box and realize and there's no toy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, just a, just a flu and a pandemic. <laughs> and right. a pandemic fucking demic yeah you are we allowed to swear work. oops sorry yeah yes. no you can you absolutely can, you swear can you, <laughs> you absolutely fucking lootly can fucking swear <laughs> all <Yeah>. right <laughs> i am going to swear because this fucking coronavirus is ridiculous and here's why i'll just kick us off it's the way in which um the administration the trump administration downplayed it um to the most gullible group of people out there anyway and now we're at the point where, because of that, um, the rest of us are now having to quarantine um, because it was downplayed. We were manipulated, minds were manipulated, and um, we didn't take the right response. So I feel like that's a huge misstep that isn't getting talked about. 100%. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I can't, I couldn't agree more. Like that, just the testing alone, or the lack of testing alone. Um, you know, just today, Abbott uh, did a. a came out and did a, uh, a little press conference and they have only tested maybe a couple dozen people in the state of texas you know 30 million people in texas and they've only kept, tested like a few hundred just just up it's not and like that's the problem is it's not even just the president it's like all down the lines like it's good to see that some governors are taking it seriously like I saw where New York, they actually pulled out the National Guard and really enforced some strict quarantine. You know, those are probably smart measures at some point. But, you know, you have other places like Texas that just they they're just letting it run rampant and say, all right, fine, go go have fun. You know, we'll see you in two weeks. Basically, <laughs> they tested eight people on Wednesday. The numbers double every 48 to 72 hours. And like oh. I'm out of school for two weeks. Like we're, we're going to yeah. online uh, education. Florida's out, Michigan's out, Maryland's out, Ohio's out, Illinois's out, and that's just as it stands right now. My mother told me that they went and shut down two schools in her school district by the afternoon. Holy like, smokes! The, it, it, dude, shit is crazy. Yeah. They shut down the but rodeo. I am... They shut down South by Southwest. They shut down all of Disneyland County. here Disneyland. in California. Disneyland. The mouse. <laughs> yeah, the I mean, carnival it's cruises are real. suspended. Yeah, you know, this is crazy. I have a vacation scheduled uh, in early April that I pretty much made up my mind that I'm probably not going to be going because it was a Royal Caribbean cruise to the Caribbean, <laughs> um, and I was at first I was like, all right, we can we can wait, we'll hold out, but man, I, I just don't think it's going to happen, and I'm really mm -hmm. bummed. But uh, mm -hmm. this this whole thing is is absolutely bananas right. and um I, I can't help but think that had we had a, a competent um administration at the forefront of this that it wouldn't be uh quite to the extent that it is but um i, I can't i can't in good conscience blame um you know the administration for the virus itself but the response to it and the way that america is supposed to handle things. I, I just, I just can't help but think that you know a better administration would have would have handled it better. Any just administration, yeah. yeah. Fucking throw James Buchanan up there, and we all know what he did. You know what you did, James Buchanan. You know it. <laughs> he, you, you put him up there, and he would have done a better job. And and the, what really kills me is uh, an article or something came out from NPR that Trump found, knew about it in January, and they could have started testing in January, but because he didn't want it to like hurt his election um chances as if yeah. you know being the savior of a pandemic won't get you reelected like he wouldn't test people and part of my issue is the sheer 
selfishness, not just of the administration. We know Trump is selfish. Yeah. That motherfucker is in it for him. But it's the selfish selfishness of the like, regular people. Some dude got on a plane in New York, flew to Florida, got off the plane and said, oh, by the way, I tested positive for the coronavirus. Yeah, that and, is so uh, irresponsible. Uh, 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 it's... And, and again, people, that comes or, down or, from the fucking administration. And, yeah. and also, people need to just like the the toilet paper runs are ridiculous right now. I, I don't understand. Yeah, this, what is this going mass on in people's panic bathrooms. about toilet paper? <laughs> I went to Target. Uh, like my wife called me. Like we were making fun of the fact that there was like people reporting no toilet paper. Then she ended up going to three stores, seeing all of them bare. I went to Target on the mainland and saw like. There's no toilet paper in Houston at all right now. I don't get it. The, the, it's mind it's ridiculous. blowing. Like, are people shitting their brains out or something? No, because it's I like Taco Tuesday every day. <laughs> I'm just, I'm perplexed. I have no idea. It just irrational, you know, behavior. But yet, yet there's just, plenty of soap and dial soap on the freaking shelves. Yeah. <laughs> get in a shower, like right. If yeah. You're not toilet paper, just like get in a shower. Yeah. Yeah. Grab your ankles. Rinse it down. That's all you gotta do, man. That's that's, that's like the best case scenario. Get a bidet. You're hard. all good. No. <laughs> see, see, I'm lucky. I I I planned ahead by planning ahead, right? I had a kid, and he wears size five diapers now, so mm. we're good, right? Oh, that's perfect. Oh god. <laughs> we got plenty of wipes. No, that's the dumbest shit. And, yeah. and and going back to this whole selfishness thing, if you as yourself are the only person who buys all of the soap the other people that mm. need to also have soap can't cannot do that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um it, it reminds me and i seeing trump today kind of talking um during the press conference about how you know oh i've got no symptoms um it just reminds me of those assholes out there right who you know, have unprotected sex and they mm. go around infecting people because mm -hmm. they don't have symptoms and you don't know like what they've been into yet. They're willing to put you at risk. I just think it's so selfish. And that's sort of the messaging problem that we're having with the administration too. It's not just about you feeling good and you feeling healthy. It's about you not carrying and spreading the disease to other people who may not be able to handle um coronavirus in the way that you know a young you know person with a with a strong mm -hmm. immune system can't so it's crazy it, it, exactly and i was at my grandparents because it's my grandmother both my grandmother's birthdays um in february so we had a party for them and they were both there and i was listening to one of my grandmother saying who is above 70 say i'm not even paying attention to it are you <sighs> are you insane <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? Like they, they are all Republicans, by the way. And, and the most dangerous part of this, and what I have thought about that nobody else will think about, is my dad is an ARDS survivor. Do you guys know what ARDS is? No. No. It is acute, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Okay. It okay. is, you know how everybody's like, if you get pneumonia, you're going to die. That's it. it uh, ARDS is a step above pneumonia. My dad okay. had it when I was in seventh grade. He was a year older than I am now. When we took him into the hospital, his blood was black. And wow. the kid that was down the hall from him who also had it, he was 17 years old and it killed him. So my what? father is very lucky to be alive. It took 20 years off of his life. Right. And he can't get this. It will kill him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That is that is scary, man. Um, yeah. The fact that anybody now can say out loud i'm not worried about it um is is super super arrogant um and it's and it's it's kind of sad man i mean i and it, it drives me nuts because i'm not exactly a religious person as some people may know but i find it very ironic how so quickly we are in this country to believe in all of these things that we can't see um but you know this virus people are are not taking seriously and we have right. literal 
scientific evidence backing up the existence well, of it. So. Actual the fucking science. The problem is it starts at the top, though. That's where yeah. that's where leadership that's where leadership counts. I mean, it really, yes. you know, the that's that's really the fundamental problem. I mean, we could talk about test trip delays, but you yeah. know, at the end of the day, a, a, a real leadership would be able to make a rational explanation for why they went with the CDC decided to develop their own instead of going with the WHO's test that's already proven, you know, or right. why they don't produce these enough. Like, or why there's, you know, like if you do like, and, and he's preventing that information from getting out too is the other frustrating part. You see stories about how he's telling people at the CDC that they aren't supposed to give information unless it's cleared through the White House first because they want to keep everybody's messaging, you know, on like they're it like just, Korea's. At the, at the end of the day, it feels like they're just more concerned about the markets than they are the healthcare. I mean, it's really what it is. He, yeah. he, he you know, it, he's pushing out policies about wanting to cut payroll tax, which, by the way, is just a back end way of gutting Social Security. You know, yep. let, 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 let's call it what it is. He wants to try and gut Social Security, whereas the Democrats right now are trying to pass a uh, uh, sick leave, mandatory sick leave during this period, which, you know, that would make sense to actually protect yeah. people's health. But right. yeah, they don't care. They, they're just they're out there throwing trillions of dollars of bonds and the, the Fed's throwing money into the stock market and watching it tank. You know, it, it's yeah. it's ridiculous. It, it seems like all they care about is keeping the Dow in th high. But reality and is, yeah, dude, yeah, you're making such an incredible point, though, like. They care about money and they mm -hmm. want to throw money into the stock market or, or try to save the stock market. But like, look, making sure that we have a healthy workforce uh, by ensuring that people, you know, aren't stressing out over their bills because they might lose their job is the way to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. You give people sick leave and that means you actually have bodies to be able to be productive. Um, when it comes down to what really brings revenue into a company. So this whole idea that like, you know, we're not going to pay for people's sick leave is just asinine mm -hmm. because what you're going to end up with is people who are jobless and thus organizations are going to lose productivity, which is ultimately going to make the stock market not bounce back to its mm -hmm. full potential. So mm -hmm. it's it's really ironic the way they think. Yeah, I mean, and they're just not recognizing either that there is already so many warning signs with the economy. You know, you're seeing, you know, wages still aren't going up at, at a good at a good rate and the, the whole trade war is still added so much uncertainty and stock markets were so inflated like this crash was due to happen quite frankly oh, oh yeah like, for it, sure. we, we've been 100%. we've been past due for this crash for a while so oh but a, a stable leadership would actually calm people and say you know listen this is kind of expected in the economic cycle we can help we can get through this it's not that big of a deal but that's yeah. not what he's doing. He's just kind of flailing around and banning travel to Europe, which is, you know, a little too little too late and very awkward half measure. And fucking it's... it up enormously. Yeah. Yeah. Like, nothing that he said. And, and we, we were, were already dabbling around the stock market, which is – and I've looked up some fucking insane statistics about it, mm -hmm. right? So before we before we go keep going down this, this road, um, before Monday – the circuit breaker that triggered if you if the dow drops seven percent it automatically automatically clicks into this thing that stops the stock market for 15 minutes and if it hits 13 percent by 325 it does it again well right. prior to monday it had been triggered uh the last time it had been tr triggered was 2008 it was triggered twice this week and when the economy cr or the the stock market crashed on thursday Thursday or whatever day it went 2300 points it hadn't done that since 1987 it was a it was black wow. monday so, i mean just mm -hmm. ridiculous he, he he has absolutely shattered the stock market because he doesn't know how to lead and that's the problem it creates fear then he tells people he's banning trade and cargo which is uh, dropping a nuke in the stock market oh yeah, yeah. that's right? ridiculous at, at, and... at the height of this at the height of his stock market it was 29,000 right we're sitting right now at like 22 23 the day that obama left august uh, office january 20th 2017 the exact stock market was 19,287 mm -hmm. and the second 
that it drops past that, we need to be blowing his shit up. I thought your market was better than Obama's. I thought yeah. you said this. Yeah. I thought you said and, that. And, and let's be honest. I mean, at the end of the day, the stock market really isn't the most meaningful metric in the world. It, it really isn't. But the fact that that is what Trump stakes his rec- reputation on, we knew this was going to happen. It was just a matter oh, yeah. of time. Like, it, like, we knew it in 2018 gonna, when they passed the tax cut. Exactly. Yeah. He was going to hit some point when he's just going to face a crisis that is not of his making that he don't yeah. know how to handle. Nope, here we are. <laughs> it just so happens we got real lucky. It's an election year. So, Absolutely. you know, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it, – <laughs> the, the 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 optics are bad all around. Mm-hmm. There, Monday was ab- an absolute shit show. He's an absolute moron. Let, let's let's leave it at that. We've known that. We know who Donald Trump is as a person. Yeah. He's he's a garbage yeah. human. Whatever. But what really really is upsetting is the people around whom him who will literally kiss his ass. Oh my Every god. time they go up to talk, I swear to God, I swear to God, by the time this is over. Trump is going to step in front of uh, Pence and he's going to give him a reach around while he's still yeah, talking about dude, 100%. him. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> 100%. It's ridiculous, man. 1,000%. Thousand, thousand that, that's what I want to I wanna focus on, too, um, when we're talking about Trump of it all. Like, a lot of people are, you know, very critical of him, as they should be. But he's one guy. He's one idiot. And he, this idiot wouldn't be able to get away with anything if he wasn't enabled by the sycophants of the GOP. And that's why mm-hmm. I also try to criticize them um, just as heavily, if not more, uh, for, for this shit show of an administration because they are really the complicit enablers. Um, they will go down in history as the people who um, allowed all of this to happen. For what? For, for judges, for tax cuts, for legitimacy? Like, I don't know, but he's one idiot and we knew he was an idiot before. Um, what's giving him any sort of credibility is is his merry band of fucking sycophants. Uh, exactly. Yes. Exa- every cabinet meeting, I'm sure, if after everybody's gone, God help you if you cut on a black light. It's just disgusting how much yeah. they kiss his ass. <laughs> it's oh, d- oh my! <laughs> yeah, fucking, I'm I'm done with these people, man. Like people people are actually dying. I'm out of work for two weeks. My wife is a waitress. And she she works at a bookstore at uh, William and Mary, which is getting no business. So we're getting a little bit of money there, but we get most of our money from the restaurant, which is now only going to be open from eleven to two thirty tomorrow, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. No one's going to be there because nobody's going to come to a fucking restaurant to eat during a goddamn pandemic. Yeah. So I am. We're we're yeah. literally like, ah, we don't know what we're going to do. We've got money stored away, so we'll we'll be all right. But <laughs> for right now, but that's that's us. We're lucky. We live with my in laws. We've got a little bit of wiggle room, but that's not everybody. Right. And God, thank God for a lot. Of, like uh, Dominion in- Energy in Virginia, Cox uh, Cable in Virginia, they're they're not charging, cutting people's stuff off, nothing because of all this because people can't work, and you know that hurts their stock market too because people can't go and buy shit they don't need. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. It, yep. It's it's. <sighs> <laughs> can you believe that and I, and I said this earlier uh you know last week was super tuesday no no like, it feels like so much longer it just ago. feels like it was a month ago like we were but, sitting here talking about how biden was gonna uh you know crush bernie and it's like all of a sudden just the world changed like in a week it's and, crazy to me mm-hmm. that how um surprised some of the journalists and pundits were um when when biden did as well as he did and i i was just kind of sitting back and being like well we kind of knew this was gonna happen yeah um, <laughs> it was kind it was of pretty obvious this way <laughs> um, it, it, but, it ex- especially when he had that you know everybody endorsed him night you know that uh, and that was fantastic you know Sam Claiborne did it. I mean, obviously, God, 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 thank God for South Carolina for saving the uh, Democratic Party. Because if, sure. if, if they did not unify behind Biden, like, and, it, and that came out all split and, you know, it was a little bit muddled, we could be in for a real, you know, shit show of a primary, you know, really oh duking God. it out all the way to the to the finish. And, to, and now, thank convention. God, we finally have, you know, just two candidates left. Uh, yeah. 
and just being able to now we can find a real con- contrast between you know obviously you know I think Biden is probably going to be the nominee the math Absolutely. is just there the, the, it is there's no it's almost impossible for Bernie to come back like yeah I mean Florida you know. is going to seal the deal Let's oh for sure much. <laughs> they're going to <laughs> shit all over Bernie Sanders and yeah. the p- part of Bernie Sanders problem is and I, I learned this when we went to the Bernie San- Sanders rally me and Katrina kind of both looked at each other and were like none of these people are going to go vote like mm-hmm. nobody in this room that and when you have voter turnout it be 13 percent for the young people that's mm-hmm. a problem yeah and i have been I've, I've been relatively vocal about not being a biden supporter i went and saw him speak i saw bernie yeah. speak i saw mm-hmm. klobuchar's husband who's boring as fuck yeah sorry john <laughs> bissler i do not want to take any of your law classes but in in the grand scope of things from a presidential level Joe Biden has kind of had the best week ever. Yeah, um, he yeah. has dealt with a crisis head on that the mm-hmm. actual president couldn't handle mm-hmm. financially and as far I mean, like medically. Um, he came out on top on Super Tuesday, the sequel, um, yeah. and did yeah. really, really well. And One Washington. He's re- <laughs> it, he, he, it, it has just been absolutely mind boggling how, how well he's done. And I think. And I'm gonna go out ahead and actually throw out my endorsement here because who the fuck I'm like I'm gonna fucking endorse Bernie, but you know I, my my whole point was you know I like Biden, but I can't really get behind him sure. like that. I'll vote for him, sure. but I th- like I, I'm I'm all in on the Biden train on this one. Like I, he he impressed me. He did what it took to mm-hmm. impress somebody that really hasn't been impressed by a lot. Not since Beto dropped out. I I I just I couldn't give my heart away that easy. Not again. Yeah, it took a while, man. I, I was with you. When when Beto dropped out, I was very uh, hesitant to get behind any of the other uh, more new faces. And the reason why is because once a guy like Beto, who in my opinion, obviously I'm biased as hell because I think Beto's amazing, but I really do think that he was sort of like this future um, vision of what a politician is and what a leader can be. When he dropped out, I, something clicked and I was like, dude, none of these other quote unquote new faces have a shot uh, because Biden was polling uh, at the top for the entirety of the uh-huh. primary before the primary, before the campaign even started, he was at the top. And yeah, I'm like, before we ever even joined the race, he was yeah. polling better than everybody else. Yeah. yeah. So there was no like rhyme or reason for anyone and in my my opinion to really think that that was going to change given that you know we have this sort of hyper um hyper partisan time period we've got the media who's super snarky we've got dark money we've got all these packs and just it's just all these factors um that worked really against beto and the other Mm -hmm. candidates like there's no way that that you know a joe biden type person wasn't going to appeal to really a plurality of, of the American people. So, yeah, I, I think, I think that's really kind of what happened is everybody just realized that Biden was kind of inevitable. Like he was, yeah. a good, he was a good enough compromise for everybody. I think. Yeah. You know, I, He's you know. a good transitional president. I yes. think he would be a good transitional yeah. president. Yeah. Cause I, I think mean, with I, a lot of, it, it, I'll be honest. I, I don't know that he would serve more than one term. I don't for some think reason. So I think he would be yeah. a one term president. Yeah. I, I agree because he's going to be like 87 by the time that's done. I yeah. know he's not old. <laughs> he, I know he's said as much. Um, I, I really do. And I think he knows um, that he is a transitional president. And that's sort of the messaging that I think a lot of us are getting frustrated about with the, with the Bernie Sanders side of the, the, the field. Um, you know, for a lot of us, this is a time period of, of, of grave danger. Um, mm. the, the democracy is literally hanging on by a thread and we've got people upset because we don't have a, a free college payoff plan. Like I'm like losing my mind when I see people draw these distinctions between Bernie and, and, and Biden when the focus is saving democracy right now. Everything else that we want, like everyone's gonna have to take a, a back seat on the 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 must-haves um and put the focus on the reality <laughs> <gotta be> of, <laughs> yeah we need a democracy before we can have the must-haves like so let's let's put it on pause 
Let's mm-hmm. beat fucking Trump. And then we can talk about the best way to get universal health care. And then we can talk about, you know, a free college, you know, plan or whatever. And I think that reality is just not there for some people. Um, but it is for, for black people. I'm going to say that. Uh, we yeah. understand. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> Maybe because we've been here before. Um, we've been in, in our, you know, the, the black community has been in uh, positions before where, you know, their lives are literally in danger. And I think pragmatism and and common sense really do prevail. And shout out to all the, you know, non people of color out there who really get it and are like right there with us as allies. Like, mm-hmm. um, I think that's so important. But um, there's, there's a segment of the population who's uber privileged um, right now. Cause they, that they takes don't... some kind of privilege, man. I, yeah. I, I, I've, oh, seen, I've heard I, like I like that is a, yeah. a an exceptional amount of privilege to say. Well, <laughs> my candidate's not going to get, so fuck you. I'm not yeah. going to vote. Right, that, right. What the right. hell is wrong? Like, and and, and you're right. As far as a transitional candidate, like democracy first, we can get that. But you yes. know what we're gonna get when we get save that democracy? All of that other shit. All we'll, that other yeah. shit. All, and, gradually, and, and, and we'll be able to bring in someone like a Beto or a Kamala. And yes. fresh, well, or even Biden by himself. I mean, that's the one thing that really frustrates me is these people who go out there and try and compare him to Trump, and like he's nothing like Biden's f- fighting for a fifteen dollar minimum wage and ending right to work laws. Those are some yeah. extremely progressive policies. Like that's right. not, you know, especially the right to work law is a big thing. Bernie you know, is the, closer the, to Trump than than Joe Biden is. One hundred percent. Having just, seen, he's the other side of the same coin. It's I, like I, I've been at that rally. It's so it's, it's, many like same just, idea. It's progressive. He has progressive policy. Like, everybody talks about his marijuana policy. You know, at the end of the day, all a president can do is declassify it off of Schedule One. Anything else has to come from the legislature. Yep. I mean, bottom line, you know, so his position of, well, we'll let, let the states decide. I'll take it off Schedule One. You know, that's good enough. I mean, what do you, you know, you're not going to get legal, complete legalization federally through the Senate right now. So what do you, what do you expect? Yeah, you know, it's like, what that. do you expect here? You know, it's, yeah. There's That's plenty of progressive stuff in his in his uh, in his agenda. L- let me clarify. Let me clarify my statement just real fast because <laughs> everybody's going to be like, "Oh my God, he said Trump and Bernie are the same thing." No, 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 no. Same idea, same coin, different sides. What I mean by that is you have the same people. Who- who are and that's Bodie in the background by the way he does not want to go to bed and he is pissed and again we remind you that we are amateur so I'm going to keep going and uh, make sure I'm clear here through the crying babies I really my gut went make a Bernie supporter joke made a Bernie joke because that's exactly kind of what they sound like on Twitter at least the Russian troll versions of them Um, but no and you know everybody has shit supporters Beto had shit supporters everybody's got shit supporters that are like that that take things too far Um, but what I noticed more about the Bernie Sanders supporters being there is a lot of them were kind of uninformed yes like and that's what I mean in the in the in the aspect of um, you know Trump and his supporters, if they just like they say things and they're like, "Fuck yeah, that sounds yeah. great." Well, what did he just say? And what's his actual like history on that? Tell me what yeah. his actual policy uh-huh. are. And they're like, four more years." Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, it's just proving the build that wall, shit like all that. It is. <laughs> yeah, horseshit. Yeah. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> here's 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 la- la- the last thing I'll add on on what you're saying, Ryan. The uh, the power of the president really to get things done okay like having biden at the top of the ticket and this is i think more objectively true than anything it's not just my opinion like he obviously has a lot of endorsements um for for down ballot as well and i think that's important when we're talking about getting things done um you got to have the senate you got to have the house right so what joe biden offers that a lot of the other candidates didn't necessarily offer was um down ballot uh, success having a bernie sanders on the ticket at the top might sound great for his supporters but what about all those districts 
um, who mm -hmm. aren't necessarily um, that far to the left, those moderate districts, those purple districts, um, they got to have um, motivation from, from their constituents as well to come out and vote for them. And I think having Biden at the top of the ticket really does put some normalcy back um, in, in play and gives us a chance to actually not only um, expand our majority in the House, but even possibly win back the Senate. Oh yeah, you're a hundred percent. When I was um, I was watching the te the results for Texas come in because I was really interested um, in the primary here. Two million the... people voted. Two point five million yeah, people voted. Yeah, first Ooh. off record or turnout. Or two, two for million. Excuse Democrats. me. Two million. One point three in Virginia. It, it, for, yeah, it was record turnout for Democrats. And in this being a red state, usually the Republican primary like blows the Democratic primary away just because. In a lot of cases, that's the only chance you have to vote for like your mayor or something because there's no Democratic right. Party. So, but yeah, the Democrats actually came out and voted, but they came out and voted in numbers in the districts that Beto was competitive and the ones where he pushed the margins so close, which is what brought him so close to Cruz. The margins up in Dallas, uh, if you look around the Dallas suburbs into Fort Worth, uh, you know, the turnout was really high and it was all Biden by large margins same thing in houston harris county and the suburbs fort bend uh katie in the area around here again biden really heavily and these are you know these are your battleground uh, areas of the state you know that, that's a really good point is that you know biden is doing well in the battlegrounds i mean when michigan showed up and they went all biden and yeah came out in what was it like two and a half times the number of people came out republicans were coming out to vote for biden just because they were like i want i want two reasonable people on the uh, another option on the ticket that's reasonable you know you, you're hearing this like i when i saw that that to me signaled in michigan that they're ready to flip blue and when i saw that in texas i was like you know this is real opportunity that we're going to have somebody at the top of the ticket who can really push the margins and yeah. you know it's going to help everything you know we're going through we still we still don't have a senate uh candidate yet they're still doing a runoff mm -hmm. for that but uh yeah it's that but all those house districts state legislatures you know it, it's going to be a big year it's got to be a big year because you know the census is coming up so if if, oh, if, if we don't if we don't pick up a lot of these state houses you know or maintain them like y'all better hold on there in virginia because you know you want to be able to draw the maps oh absolutely no yeah. for sure that's that's the plan and i love have had just i i love the fact that we all know my family's republican i say it all the time they all gripe <laughs> about it and i take a particular pride because when i started on this journey i set out to undo everything that i felt that they did wrong and hearing how mad they are about the Virginia State Legislature makes me feel pretty fucking good. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I love it because I, 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 and you know, like I'm having jealous, worked with man. Beto I'm here jealous. in the state and doing all this stuff, I feel it, it, it has made me like we have the shirts where he came on the show and it said we all get to be heroes. It's a hundred percent fucking true. And for any of our listeners, I'm gonna plug this real fast. Phaedra um, is making some awesome, awesome shirts. Um, I think it's like the Beto effect dot com is what she's uh, what she's selling them through. But if you check her uh, her Twitter out, um, it is at Phaedra 11 at F.A.E.D.R.A. 1 1. Um, all of the proceeds go to um, Powered by the People. She didn't ask me to do that, by the way, but she's made a couple of shirts based off of things on the show. And the stuff she's doing is fucking cool. That's so great. that's my plug because I can. There you go. <laughs> but, um, more sponsorship <laughs> opportunities are available <laughs> we work for uh tacos and, we, we, we what is work it beaver for nuggets beaver nuggets are awesome <laughs> yeah likes on twitter i'll take that uh, or a follow from beto i will take a follow from beto and i will plug all of your stuff there you go except yeah. for the my pillow guy <laughs> fuck the my pillow guy um so there was one, one more thing um before we we kind of head on out um, something that I've noticed and it popped up earlier and DeMarcus, you've been kind of tweeting about it is the potential for canceled primaries. Woo. Louisiana canceled theirs. Yeah. Which is honestly, it is, yeah. it is the, the smart thing to do, but God damn it. That's a I bad don't precedent. like it. I do not I don't like, like it, either. it at all. Some, I... Someone calmed my, 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 tweeted out this great thread about how, you know, in the event that, 
uh, you know, we're all fearing that the November primary might get canceled for some reason because yep. Trump Trump wants to be king or something like that. Well, you know, constitutionally, and I know they don't necessarily follow the Constitution, but, uh, you know, come January uh, 2021, if there was no election, then Mike Pence and, and Trump really lose their their seats because there was no one elected and it, it actually switches over to the to the house of representatives um, um the speaker of the house becomes the the temporary president until there's an election and congress and, says, wait 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 Where, that that's I, i've never heard that before that's real so so if the election is suspended awesome. we have, <laughs> yeah we have president pelosi so yeah so congress sets the date of you know an election right if in the event that let's say it, it, it basically it serves no um trump's no it serves trump no purpose oh no good purpose to, to cancel the election because if there's no election um you know your term is up in four years so january 2020 uh 2021 inauguration day um you know you guys are out of office there was no election so you didn't get reelected, which means uh pelosi takes over as the president because she's third in command right so okay. I feel better I, about that. I, thought that. I feel a little bit better about yeah. that now. <laughs> yeah, I feel way. I feel way better. I'm yeah. totally cool with that. Okay, we, me too. We can wait, we so can wait so we have that. a safety valve. Good. We, yeah, we're 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 safe. We don't even need to spend time on that. That's we're cool. God, so, the founders of the Constitution did such a good job of like coming up with all these processes to be able to, uh, you know, remove presidents from office. It's just a shame that we couldn't use those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happens when you when you elect the literally the dumbest motherfucker alive ever. Yes. And it, d- dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. So before we um before we, we call it for the night, I am going to bring up the text that my wife, Hannah, just sent me. Um, <laughs> because she heard me talking about her in the other room um, while she's trying to get Bodie to go to sleep. And uh, she heard me say, call her a, a waitress, and she sent me a text that says, I prefer the term server. I said, sorry, I know you do. That was insensitive. I said, sorry, I know you do. That was insensitive. She said, this was mostly a joke. So, oh, uh... yeah. Speak, speak, speaking of one more real quick thing. Speaking of uh, new jobs, uh, Biden just hired uh, Jen Dillon. Jen uh, O'Malley Dillon. Jen O'Malley Dillon. Oh yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I loved her, man, and she did I such a too. good job with Beto. I think she did a good she job. Did. I, yeah. On the, at the end of the day, I mean, I heard people out there who like they weren't thrilled about her. I've seen other uh, people from other campaigns from you know Pete, Pete stands basically or pissed at her for for this too I, all i'm gonna say is you know don't judge her based on what happened with beto because at the end of the day beto is a unique candidate and i don't she think also that... helped obama win exactly so. yes. she helped obama win and, i think you know by the time she Justin got on him, by the time she got the 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 campaign going um you know and actually running uh it was just it was just a little too late at that point and it, it, it was nothing against her i think it's just she just it was just late bringing her on honestly I think yeah. also, man, that like no matter who would have been on Beto's campaign, like it could have been God Himself mm-hmm. with our system and the way that they were like hell bent on um, bringing Beto down with the oh, yeah. uh, conservative club for growth, with the media, with the the folk. Bernie feminists, Sanders like, them. Uh, shit yeah. him earlier, you know. <laughs> yeah, like there was really no way anybody running a, a legitimate campaign like like he was was going to be able to survive now had he hired you know a a sarah huckabee sanders kelly gann conway type person to maybe go back and push back in that you know really non-integrity type of way then maybe maybe there could have been something different but the way um the campaign was run was was honest and and true and unfortunately um you know just the times did, didn't have it so um Jen O'Malley's awesome though, and we're we're grateful that she's on the Biden campaign. Beto for VP. I'm you know I wouldn't be. I keep I telling I don't people dislike this. it. I don't dislike. I keep telling people this though that just adding Beto to the ticket isn't going to be enough to win Texas. Um, you're going to have to still campaign here and still spend resources here. Sure. If all you do is just add Beto to the ticket and then run off to the Rust Belt. 
it's not going to yeah. help much. You know, no, but if you not. want to make Texas a part of your strategy, Texas is a battleground state. Battleground means you have to fight for it. And yeah. Texas is very achievable if we fought for it. So if Biden was willing to yeah. fight for it in Texas, uh, Beto's a really damn good start. Definitely oh, worth ab- considering. Absolutely. Definitely a- a- worth at least as a campaigner. I think mm-hmm. – and. I, I'm I'm thinking it's going to be a Klobuchar, and if he really, really wants to, I yeah. I think Warren would be a good one. Honestly, yeah. I I think that would be a good because that would I mean that would kind of steal that progressive tie um, mm-hmm. there. So I I mean I like I like her Beto obviously. Um, I it's it's going to be interesting. I'm I'm very that's what I'm excited for most. Uh, next is the uh, is the VP candidate. Yeah, yeah. And, and pulling Jen O'Malley on is is a great hire, but. Um, you can't say enough about Simone Sanders and oh. her defense. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude, she, I saw somebody tweeted uh, something like Simone Sanders uh, came off the line like an all pro linebacker. <laughs> she was, man. She, she got that left tackle. She, she, she I had think it. She was in heels, too. <laughs> Holy Dude, shit. She, she bodied that girl. I loved it. For she did. real. You see her wading into those uh, those protesters, got hit with the iPad, and Scott up was like, that's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Just go yeah <laughs> she's awesome but they they, they did they did uh request secret service so yeah i saw that hopefully nice. that'll for, for be taken them. care of i'm i'm really hope that 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 could be one of those things that trump gets petty about i'm hoping that they just go ahead and give it to him and it's no big deal but yeah, yeah he definitely be a dick about it. it so yeah Absolutely. but uh, anyways guys so i'm actually i'm gonna i'm gonna let you guys know now I'm going to start looking at the stuff to uh, actually do some volunteer work for Biden. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's in the same here. Well, he's, he, he's, that's, he's, that's a thing now. Um, I, has, like I, said, I just needed him to, his, uh, to do something stuff. that I, I could get behind and I, I feel like I can get behind that. But for all of our listeners out there, and before we go, thank you for coming on, Demarcus. We love having you. It's always fun to hang out oh, and yeah, talk. We thanks. we talk all the time on Twitter. Yeah, like, all of us get along. And we interact all the time, but it's fun Seriously. to actually hear it's each fun other's to come voices. Down, actually, you know, you can t- say much more than 120 characters. Exactly. Nice. We I can say fuck say a whole too, lot more. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we're here for it. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome back but, uh, anytime, of course. Absolutely. Thanks, Especially Absolutely. if you're going to have Beto on. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna, we're gonna keep pushing no, no, no. One. I'm keeping that one to myself. No, I'm joking. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Ryan got ha- got to have all the fun on that one. Yeah, you know. <laughs> vicariously that's what you him. get for knocking on a couple hundred doors. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That is, uh, that is fair. Valid. But uh, all right, guys. Let's uh, keep right. on getting out there. Let's keep on donating. Let's keep on volunteering. And let's keep on looking ahead to Beto Days. Thank mm-hmm. you.